Hello, everyone. I've just got access to the new OpenAI GPT-3 toolkit, and I thought it might be useful just to show what this can do and to have a think, perhaps, about the difference between this approach to AI, which is proprietary and commercial, and the more fundamental libraries which allow people to define and train and create their own machine learning models. So, so this is the OpenAI um, page, and there's a playground. And the, in the playground, you can uh, just have a look and see what it does. And it's actually, it's, it's basically a machine model, learning model which has been trained with lots of text on the internet and is able to um, continue a piece of writing automatically right around a topic. So um, if I just start typing, something like that, it will continue. And you can see that it starts to, and, and now this is very interesting. So basically this text is, original in the sense that it isn't something that has been directly drawn from a particular document on the internet. It's been assembled through a process of training from lots and lots of text on the internet. And it's it's basically used an algorithm to reproduce patterns which fit the pattern of the initial text that I've, I've given it. Now, um, and on it goes, and it's, it's kind of interesting. It's also interesting that it even makes spelling mistakes, which presumably it's also been trained to reproduce. Um, it also works in any language. So uh, it's not just English documents that it's been um, uh, absorbing, but um, if I just start a, a ridiculous thing, so um, it will riff on any subject and of course if i just start with something as simple as that it could go anywhere but it's very interesting to see this um in action so they call this um an api and they have a they have provided basically an application programming interface they provided a set of function calls which would enable you to build this kind of generative functionality in your own applications um, but the key thing about this is that the, the underlying technology is called GPT-3, and the PT stands for pre-trained. So this is basically a pre-trained machine learning model, which has this capacity to um, generate text in response to particular prompts. But the API doesn't give you the ability to train your own model. It, you, you basically use the models that they've created. And they've created a variety of models, uh, you can see, and they've been trained in different ways, although uh, I'm not sure if there's any detail on specifically how the models have been trained. Uh, I'd be surprised if there was, because this is part of the, this is what they're selling, basically. They're selling these models, which they created, which have this uh, capability to generate text. Um, now, if we actually have a look at the documentation, um, you can see that the API itself is uh, fairly basic. So basically, there's a, there's a bit of code here. So this is code for getting authorization into this stuff. And then we can write our code in Python. And um, uh, there's a very simple um, command that you can use to actually get it to return uh, bits of text. So um, And they've got some code examples. There's an example which gives a summary of a piece of text, which can be quite useful, I suppose. Um, and uh, different kinds of summaries and classification. Uh, so this, is, this could be useful for the sort of emotional classification that's done on a lot of social media analysis now. But it, this is all high level. So this is basically um, a set of commands to use a pre-trained model. The company, OpenAI, is selling that pre-trained model. So this is a different order of uh, engagement at a kind of technical level with AI than the kind of stuff that Google's been doing with uh, TensorFlow. And I just want to show you the, the contrast here because the, um, Google's TensorFlow technology basically provides 
people with the building blocks of how to train their machine learning model. And Google have even gone to the trouble of creating this wonderful thing called the Teachable Machine. So this is the Teachable Machine uh, page, and it allows you to create your own machine learning models. Uh, and it does this because it's got uh, quite a beefy processor in the background running on one of Google's servers, which allows it to train machine learning models. And uh, if I go to the image project, I can start my webcam. And um, I can get it to recognize various objects. So perhaps uh, I'm just looking for something uh, near to hand. I can get it to recognize my mobile phone. So I can just sort of uh, hold the record button down. And um, I'm just going to move my mobile phone around as it's recording. And there's such an important thing here with regard to training any machine learning model, which is the fact that it's taken multiple images of the same thing. Um, in information theoretical terms, this is redundancy. And redundancy is one of the most important features of um, machine learning. And basically, if I uh, go through this process and um, now, there's uh, no point in just training it to recognize one thing. So I'm going to get, ask it to train another thing. In fact, I'm going to say, rename this class here as phone. And I'm going to record something else. I just happen to have a 20 pound note in front of me. So I'm going to wave this around and record multiple images of my 20 pound note. Um, there we are, lovely. And I can do both sides as well. OK, here we are. OK, lovely. So um, now I have. Um, I'm just going to call it money. So can it tell the difference between a phone and money? And if I train it, uh, what I'm making in this training process is what OpenAI is basically selling. I'm making a model. And, and obviously, I can create functions to call this model with different, um, different bits of data and see what, see what it does. But, um, but basically, I've constructed a model. And you can see that actually Google allowed me to export this model, which is uh, very interesting. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Anyway, let's just test it. So here's my phone. Well, it's pretty convinced that that's my phone. Actually, it's, um, if I wiggle it around, it's not so convinced. Here's the money. Phone, money, phone, money, phone, money. Right, there we go. So it's uh, very convincing, isn't it? If I want to export it, I just click on the export button. And um, I can download the model as a file. And if I um, actually, I can t take this code and run it in a web page, um, put the file that I've downloaded in a folder that this uh, web page can see, and I have a working web based program using the machine learning model that I've created with these images. Actually, there's more I can do with this. Um, because I can actually upload images. So if I, for example, have a huge body of images of butterflies and I want to create a machine learning program to recognize butterflies, I just upload them into this. So it's interesting to compare the flexibility of the facilities that are provided by Google and the core libraries for training machine learning with what we get with GPT-3. And I'm not taking anything away from GPT-3 and yes, of course, the um, examples that they give, uh, so we've got all sorts of examples, and you can see how um, examples like this, um, being able to uh, classify things, being able to generate spreadsheets, being able to convert code from one language to another, all of these are entirely possible, and they are all uh, potentially quite disruptive and important, and they might be of interest for integration into various kinds of software applications. But it is still a, a pre-trained model. The user is effectively a consumer of the model. They are not a creator of the model. And that is a key difference. And, um, and I think if we're really going to make progress with machine learning, we need users to be in charge of the creation of machine learning models as much as they are um, actually using them to do useful things. And I think this, this leaves us with a, a big question and um, a challenge for moving to the future. Okay, thank you.